Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at an introduction to blocks. So blocks are for when your drawing files are starting to get a little bit more complicated and perhaps you have a group of objects or features that are going to be uh, used repeatedly in different drawings. Um, you're basically grouping things together and you can create new files of that group that you can then insert into other drawings later. Um, so just a quick example that's sort of a just a random shape I made is this chamfered rectangle with a circle and a hatch. So you can see that each one of these features is separate right now. So if I want to make them all one object, I can select them all, type block. Um, I'll just call my block random rectangle, uh, convert to block allow exploding that you should usually have turned on um, in case you want to change one of the individual parts later. So I'm going to hit OK. Okay, so you can see now just like with the joining the polyline command that we learned in a previous class, uh, if I highlight any part of this block now it is all highlighted. Um, so if I click on the block I have properties of the entire block. So if I want to change the scale or anything like that, it will change everything about the block. Um, okay, so for now this is just a normal block, so it's just a just a group in this drawing. If I have another drawing that I want to put this block into, what I can do is use the W block command, which is right block. So my source, um, I could either start a new block with objects or since I already have a block made, I'm just going to click block. Uh, let's see, random rectangle is the one I made. Okay, or I could do the entire drawing is another option. Um, so file name and path, it's just going to default to saving to my documents. I will tell it to save to my desktop save it there so it saves as a separate DWG file uh, just name is the same name as the block unless I tell it differently so I'm going to hit OK so if I have another drawing if I if AutoCAD decides to work come on computer you can do it there we go Okay, so I've got a separate drawing file now, and say I want my random rectangle to show up in this file, what I can do is use the insert command. So now it's going to look for objects or blocks to put into my file. So I can browse for that block um, on my desktop here. There is random rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and hit open. Here it is. It's asking me for a scale in each of the axes. So I can go ahead and hit OK. So you can see that I had clicked specify insertion point on screen. Um, you can see that the insertion point for the block, which I probably should have changed, but it's a little too late for that now. The insertion point for the block was the origin for my other drawings. So you can see it was somewhere around there if my origin is down here. So in the future what you can do when you're writing a block is um, you can actually choose an insertion point rather than having just a generic insertion point of the origin. Okay so a, an example that's probably a little bit more um, useful for getting into designing with AutoCAD is uh, say I've got a a piping system or something and I have a piping fitting that I'm going to be using pretty consistently um, I ideally I would have a block for that fitting that I would be able to insert into any sort of drawing where I need it um, so I went ahead and really cool website for all sorts of engineering good stuff uh, McMaster car if you come in and search for parts in McMaster car so I went into um, Y fittings 
This is just a uh, brass Y fitting. If you click on the part number, um, it brings you into the menu. You can actually come down here to the product detail where it says CAD. If you click on that, it shows their drawing for it, which has usually got a some sort of isometric or an oblique, and then a multi-view. You can save it in uh, 3D files like SolidWorks, um, which you will use for Engineering 26 if you move on to that class. Um, for now, what I can do is I can save this as a 2D DWG, which I've, I've already done. So I will go back to my drawing here where I want to insert my file. So I'm going to use that insert command. Okay, this time I'm going to browse on my desktop. There's the part number for that Y fitting. So you can see the drawing here is previewing. I can specify my insertion point on screen. There we go. I've got my drawing file that is a one-to-one -one scale since that was the default scale that it entered as. Um, you can see that since it is a block, the entire thing is highlighted. And So maybe I'm doing some sort of... I would probably be using this view, this profile view of the fitting um, if I'm doing a piping diagram of some sort. Uh, this probably isn't going to be useful, this drawing this view of the multi-view, so I'll be using this guy. So I can use the explode command, just like with polylines, I can use the explode command to break up this block. So now I'm back to individual pieces here. So I don't want the isometric or the text or that outer box. Um, I don't want all this awesome McMaster car information about the material and the part number. So I'll delete that. I'm just going to get rid of everything I don't need here. So what I can do here is, okay, I'm down to just the part that I need for my piping drawing that I'm going to be doing. Um, I can re-block that. So I can type block or, since I'll be using, if I think I'm going to be using this frequently, I would probably do a W block and say, okay, I've already selected my objects. Uh, I'm going to call it we'll call this block um, Y fitting uh, profile. Okay, uh, base point, I'm gonna, you can see this is what I forgot to do earlier. My base point, I want to pick a point rather than what is has as the origin. I'm gonna pick a point as probably right here at the end of the center line. Um, that would line up conveniently with a center point on some sort of other pipe. So I'll click that. There's my new base point. I'll hit OK. And if I wanted to insert that later, um, I would have another fitting like that. So that's probably a, enough for a decent introduction to blocks. Um, like I said, it's, it's great for parts that you're going to be using consistently or complicated things that you're grouping together. Um, one last thing I can mention is that if I have, since this is a, I wrote a block for this but didn't block it in this file, um, so I already specified my objects, if I pick a point there, okay, Okay, so I've got my block here. Um, if I have a scaled drawing of my piping diagram, and I it's not actually, this is full size here, so if I have a scale of 1 to 2 of whatever piping section I'm showing on my drawing, I can, rather than scaling individual lines or anything like that, I can actually go ahead and scale the entire block. So I can specify my doesn't really specifying a base point for the scale, and then what I can do is I can either you can see it's stretching around. What I can do is I can just type in a scale factor of 0.5. So that shrunk down my entire block rather than shrinking down an individual aspect of the block. And the same thing would apply if I had you know pipes connected or anything like that. I would be able to 
block everything I needed and scale it all down as a group. 